drama from Ibsen to Eliot by Raymond Williams examines the evolution of modern drama by analyzing the works of significant playwrights from Henrik Ibsen to T. S. Eliot. Williams focuses on the thematic, structural, and stylistic developments in drama, emphasizing the relationship between theatre, society, and ideology. His study highlights how modern drama reflects the social changes and intellectual currents of the 19th and 20th centuries. Williams traces how playwrights adapted traditional dramatic forms to engage with contemporary realities, including shifts in class dynamics, gender roles, and individual psychology. Williams positions Henrik Ibsen as a foundational figure in modern drama, crediting him with breaking away from the constraints of romanticism and melodrama to develop a form of theatre grounded in social realism. Ibsen's plays, such as A Doll S House and Ghosts, explore the conflicts between personal freedom and social expectations. Williams emphasizes that Ibsen's use of everyday settings and realistic dialogue allowed for a deeper exploration of societal problems such as gender inequality and moral hypocrisy. Ibsen's plays not only dramatize personal crises, but also interrogate the norms that structure family and society, making theatre a site for social critique. Williams also explores the influence of Anton Chekhov and his unique contribution to modern drama through the use of subtext and psychological depth. In Chekhov's plays, such as The Cherry Orchard and Uncle Vanya, much of the drama unfolds beneath the surface of everyday conversation, capturing the complexities of human emotion and motivation. Williams argues that Chekhov's focus on the inner lives of his characters reflects a shift toward introspection in theatre moving away from external action toward emotional realism. This innovation influenced later playwrights, demonstrating how theatre could convey the subtleties of human experience. The discussion extends to August Strindberg, whose expressionistic techniques introduced new possibilities for representing inner conflict and psychological disorientation. Strindberg's plays, such as Miss Julie and the Dream Play, incorporate fragmented narratives and dream sequences, blurring the boundaries between reality and imagination. Williams suggests that Strindberg's experimental approach reflects the anxieties of a world grappling with rapid social change and the breakdown of traditional certainties. His work anticipates the developments in modernist drama, which sought to explore the subjective nature of experience and the instability of identity. Moving into the 20th century, Williams analyzes the contributions of playwrights such as Bertolt Brecht, who developed the concept of epic theater to engage audiences intellectually rather than emotionally. Brecht's plays, including Mother Courage and Her Children, and The Good Person of Sichuan, challenge conventional theatrical forms by using techniques such as alienation to prevent the audience from becoming too emotionally absorbed in the narrative. Williams emphasizes that Brecht's theatre aims to provoke critical thinking about social and political issues aligning with Marxist ideals of raising consciousness. The goal of epic theatre is not just to entertain, but to inspire action and change by making the audience aware of the forces shaping their world. Williams also discusses the influence of symbolism and surrealism 
in the works of playwrights like Lugi Pirandello and Federico Garca Lorca, these movements reflect a shift away from realism toward more abstract forms of expression, using symbolism to explore themes such as alienation and existential despair. Plays like Pirandello S6 characters in search of an author challenge the conventions of narrative structure by questioning the nature of reality and identity. Williams suggests that such experiments reflect a broader cultural shift towards skepticism and uncertainty in the modern world, where traditional narratives no longer provide clear meaning or resolution. Another significant development that Williams examines is the theatre of absurdity, represented by playwrights such as Samuel Beckett and Eugene Ionesco. Plays like Beckett's Waiting for Godot and Inesco S. The Bald Soprano reject traditional plot structures, instead focusing on the meaningless and repetitive nature of human existence. Williams argues that the absurdist theatre reflects a sense of disillusionment with rationality and progress, capturing the existential anxieties of the post-war period. By abandoning conventional storytelling, these plays force audiences to confront the absurdity of life and question the assumptions that underlie human behavior. In addition to these dramatic developments, Williams addresses the role of T. S. Eliot, who sought to reintegrate poetic language into theater through works like Murder in the Cathedral. Eliot's drama combines modern themes with traditional forms, drawing on religious and philosophical ideas to create a theatre of reflection and ritual. Williams suggests that Eliot's use of verse drama represents an attempt to reclaim the spiritual dimension of theatre, offering a response to the fragmentation of modern experience. Eliot's work reflects a desire to find meaning and coherence in a world that seems increasingly disjointed and uncertain. Throughout his analysis, Williams emphasizes the interplay between form and content in modern drama. He argues that the evolution of dramatic structure reflects the changing social and intellectual conditions of the time. Playwrights adapted existing forms, or created new ones, to address contemporary concerns, whether through realism, expressionism, symbolism, or absurdism. Williams views these developments as part of a broader cultural shift toward questioning established norms and exploring new ways of understanding the self and society. Williams also highlights the importance of theatre as a public space for dialogue and debate. He argues that drama serves as a mirror for society, reflecting its conflicts and contradictions. However, theatre is not just a passive reflection. It also plays an active role in shaping social consciousness by presenting different perspectives and challenging dominant ideologies. Theatre has the potential to influence how people think about themselves and their world. Williams sees modern drama as a site of contestation, where competing values and ideas are explored and negotiated. Another theme that Williams discusses is the relationship between individual experience and collective identity. Many of the plays he examines focus on the tension between personal desires and social obligations, exploring how individuals negotiate their place within a larger community, whether through Ibsen's portrayal of personal emancipation, Brecht's critique of capitalism, or Beckett's existential inquiries. Modern drama, 
grapples with the complexities of identity in a rapidly changing world. Williams argues that these explorations reflect a broader concern with the nature of modernity, where traditional forms of belonging are disrupted and new identities are forged. Williams concludes by reflecting on the challenges and possibilities of contemporary drama. He suggests that modern playwrights must continue to explore new forms of expression that respond to the changing conditions of the present. At the same time, he emphasizes the need for theater to remain engaged with social and political issues, maintaining its role as a space for critical reflection and collective imagination. For Williams, the history of drama from Ibsen to Eliot demonstrates the ongoing relevance of theatre as a cultural practice that not only reflects, but also shapes the world in which we live.